My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. Appreciate everybody watching, uh, liking, subscribing. Um, looks like our uh, our market's doing really, really well today. We're really, really going up. Uh, Bitcoin's dominance, forty-seven percent. Uh, market cap, three over, just hit over three hundred billion just a little while ago. Uh, Bitcoin's up six percent. Ethereum's finally got everything is finally starting to go up and start following Bitcoin again. Um, when it comes to rising and going down at the moment anyways um, so market's looking great guys I mean we all know that it's looking good and uh, you know here's our 24 hour changers big guys mithril I've been seeing mithril a lot lately on the changers so myth I mean if everybody's been holding mithril um, great great coin to hold you know I didn't get into it I have, I have a lot of coins already um, and of course I just started bot trading and so on and so forth so um, I kind of missed the mithril train on that one, but you know, you live and learn. Um, I, I did push it though in a couple videos, you know what I mean? If you're just getting started um, a couple months ago, probably a month and a half ago, um, you'd want to pick up mithril as one of your um, bags of coins. Uh, Denticoin's up 10%, so that's good. You know, finally, Denticoin's finally moving back up. Tron's finally going back up due to their secret little things going on, secret little uh, business plans and so on, I guess. Um, so, Looking pretty good. So let's move into some talk here. Uh, these, you know, they talk about Bitcoin. Obviously, Blitz is up over 8,200, um, but the wilder crypto markets and tokens suffer. So I was kind of saying this on my last video that Bitcoin is kind of getting away from the pack here. You know, obviously their Bitcoin dominance is going up. So when everything starts going down, you know, we normally see Bitcoin start the trend down and everybody goes down, start the trend up and everybody goes up. And now it's not. It's um, at least for the past couple of um, uh, waves here that we've hit, um, Bitcoin's just kind of stayed uh, steady and are going up while everything else is going down. And this is kind of kind of touching on that. So tokens fall. So, however, in the past 48 hours, the cryptocurrency market has shown a lack of correlation between major digital assets and tokens, suggesting that investors have reallocated funds stored in small tokens to major cryptocurrencies. So absolutely, when everybody you know is on the the the, the boat for Bitcoin, they're going to take all their small you know um, uh, cap coins and put them all into big you know major uh, you know large cap coins. So that's obviously a, something that happens. Obviously, when we hit a huge 10, 20 percent uh, gain in in uh, the Godfather of crypto here, Bitcoin. So the volume of Bitcoin and Ether, which hovered around 3.5 billion. And 1.3 billion rose to 6.6 .6 billion and 2.1 billion, respectively, by nearly twofold within a period of seven days. Now, let's go back over there. Let's look into actual volume of Bitcoin and volume of Ethereum right now. Because I'll tell you what, there's a big difference right now. Seven million now almost hitting and two million. So they're not really moving. They're finally moving up now. But Bitcoin's been on that uptrend for a long time. So 7 million they're almost hitting now. And Ethereum's just kind of baselining at that 2 million. Hopefully they're going to be going up. So that's kind of what that was saying. And the volume of Bitcoin and Ether is 3.5. Now it's at 6.9. Um, let's see. Independent price movements in the cryptocurrency exchange market are crucial to set up the next major rally for Bitcoin and other major digital assets, specifically because it sig signifies the maturity and stability of the cryptocurrency market. So they're absolutely right. You know, when, when you go back over and you look at the actual 24 hour changers, OK, normally when we look at this and we have these huge like with Bitcoin going up, you know, 10 percent, um, everything is in the green, right? Everything, um, at least the top 100 is always in the green, right? Well, that's not happening anymore. And as you can see, you're getting about 60 down, 70 down, and everything's starting to turn red. So um, it, it's good. That's actually a good thing to see is, is you don't want things following um, one coin. You want it to become independent. So independent price movements are good. Um, you know, again, you know, to set up the next major rally, and it signifies maturity of the, of the market completely. So now everything is getting away from... Um, I, I wouldn't say getting away, but the dominance of Bitcoin is not affecting the pricing of these other coins. So that's actually a good thing to see. You know, you don't see in stock market everything following one thing um, or in any market at that. So um, one last thing. So under normal circumstances, this is kind of touching on that. Under normal circumstances, 
Tokens such as Augur, Aeon, 10X, Arc, Polymath would increase with the Bitcoin price going up 5-10%, as I said. However, on July 24th, the price of most tokens actually decreased 10%, which the market has not seen since early 2017. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but that's kind of, you know, the, the way I see it is is kind of the way he's seeing it as well. You know, I, I've been kind of touching on my last couple of videos is um, Bitcoin's getting away from the pack. And these guys are just reiterating that it's a good thing to the market. And, I, I you know, overall, I, I do agree with that. So a uh, good thing to see. So moving forward into some uh, analyst summary of analysts, I've been following this guy, a uh, fam owner. Uh, and this was 10 hours ago, and you know, he does his whole daily you know, uh, sentiment on what's going on. And uh, we moved up 8,000 area. RSI of, on, all time, on all time frames up to daily is at overbought levels. Oh, absolutely. We're at a huge overbought level. We closed over 7,600. Um, and, uh, you know, MA128 daily, I don't know. Strong signal and also are above Bollinger Band midline. So I, I checked the Bollinger Band midline, and we've been up over the Bollinger Band midline since we've been going up since the last, um, since Bitcoin has been on this, you know, upward trend. So and we'll get into some technical analysis. I'll show you kind of what he's saying here um, in a picture form. So uh, next major resistance, 8280, MA 50 weekly. So I've been noticing a lot lately that everybody uses the 15200. Um, on day trading, it's 20 and 200 that, that most day traders are using on uh, to get make gains on a day, hourly, minute charts and then be done for the day. So 20, 200 for days, 50, 200, I would, I would assume for all around market that people are using for baseline um, uh, technical analysis. So moving forward, it seems in the war of the bears and bulls, we are entering another battle. Can the bulls create enough FOMO to create distance to the lows and overcome major resistance levels. So that's the question we've been asking for a couple days now, now that big, since Bitcoin's been up on this, um, a few days now, uh, on this upward trend. So uh, if if so, we are not going to see the level current levels for a long time. Or do the bears lead the bull, bell, bulls into a trap and then smashing hard to the downside? And I kind of mentioned that in my last one. Um, but, you know, nothing's really changed that much, so it makes sense. So here's the bull scenario that he's kind of saying that we're forming right now that we're in. Um, after completing five waves up, we reconfirm 7,000 plus level in an ABC pullback gathering strength for another move up. Okay, so this is the scenario um, if we stay in a bull trend. Okay, and you know, I, I kind of agree with that, but yes and no. And again, they're not always right, but most of the time, you know, he, he's on the right track. So... With that being said, that confirms a higher low and a bullish five-wave count. So just because we've completed a five-way count doesn't mean we're on a bullish um, scenario. Um, but he's saying that will confirm that we're on a bullish scenario. So alternate, bull flag is forming. That brings us directly to next resistant level at 8,300 from here. That's in a 24-hour. You know, he speaks to this in a 24-hour basis. So it's kind of right on track, uh, 24 hours, speaking about 24 hours. Volume needs to increase. I mean, we're sitting at six million, seven million, billion right now. So if we stick at seven billion and keep going up and stay, stay there, then we will sustain. Uh, we overcome the death, death cross area of the thirty or fifty week MA and break above it. So we'll look in, we'll get into that with technical analysis. So the only thing that I wanted to touch on was possibly the bear scenario that is still a right around the corner, possibly. We move up for one or two weeks into the death cross, which is the 30 and 50 MA weekly at around 8,500, then drop significantly. So alternate, bears are turning after the RSI gets oversold and make a lower low. So this is just, you know, and if that happens, then of course we go down to 5,800 and then new lows range from 49 to 43. I mean, that's just a really worst case scenario he's kind of showing you here. So, you know, four to 14 day time frame. Uh, he's sitting there, uh, he bases his candles on, daily candles on. So let's look at this bear scenario real quick on kind of what he's saying here. So obviously Fibonacci, I always put a Fibonacci in here. This is the EMA 50 and the EMA 200. 200 is blue. So we hit this um, uh, golden cross right here and definitely was a golden cross. I mean, it crossed over and Bitcoin has been well above over the 200 
MA line for quite some time. Um, so it's a good thing to see. Now, that's kind of what he's saying is, um, are we going to overcome that next death cross and break above it? So when these, he's saying that in the next, you know, the next time that they be coming into a death cross, is it going to be a golden cross or is it going to be a death cross is what he's kind of saying. You know what I mean? Because this is a golden cross because it went up and it's positive. You know, it's, it's giving you positive results on the coin. Um, a death cross obviously is when it crosses down over and then it just plummets. So, it, you know, are we going to hit a death cross or is it just kind of going to be like the MACD and just kind of hit, hit each other, kiss each other and kind of, you know, move away from each other again and break it. So, uh, let's see, what else was he kind of saying? Volume means you increase. Um, and you know, let's get back on the death cross here a little bit. It's kind of where I was really reiterating on. So this is the day chart in Coinbase. Uh, if you move, you know, I got I got a little corridor here that's moving here. I'd say wedge because it's kind of forming into a wedge here. Because, I mean, it's, it's on a 45 degree angle up. It's great to see on Bitcoin that's 45 degree angle. If you can see through the, the, the Fibonacci here, and it's actually resisting on that 618 on the Fibonacci. So um, if it breaks the 618 and then breaks that corridor, it, I, I'm assuming it's going to stay on, a, on an upward trend. Prob Probability-wise, percentage-wise, it should be. And then we have the Ichimoku cloud behind it. If you can see this red behind it here, we, I mean, it weathered through that cloud, weathered, 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 and then boom, as soon as it got through the cloud, boom, it just freaking took a hit up all the way to the 618 line on the Fibonacci. Awesome to see. And, you know, quote unquote, we are in an upward trend market. That's quote unquote. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, when anybody talks about Ichimoku clouds or uses them and so on, tells you the same thing. When it weathers through a red Ichimoku cloud going up, and it finally weathered it and it, I mean, just spiked right in and right after it, we're on an upward trend. You know, is it going to sustain? That's kind of the question that we're asking each other right now. Um, but that's why I like these bull scenarios to kind of go over to give you a little um, gauging on what's going on here. Um, and as you can see, our RSI, we're way up on Bitcoin, real high up on Bitcoin right now. So is it going to do a small pullback, you know, and then and then to keep going? That's kind of what they're asking, what, you know, maybe what the death cross possibly happened. But the 200 and the 30 see, or 50 seem to be quite far away from each other. You know, I, I don't know if they're talking about the 50 and the 30, you know, actually respectively. Um, I, I don't think so, but we, sh you know, let's see here. So, yeah, I mean, possibly, you know, they're saying that, you know, are we on a golden cross or a death cross here? Golden cross or death cross? I don't know. I wouldn't do things that way. Um but it's tough to, to know what he's what he's saying in his reading here, this fam Unger guy um, and his in his uh, team of analysts. So, you know, just keep this stuff in mind with Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin's on its own. Uh, it's independent now. It's starting to become independent. So um, with that being said, you know, now everybody's, you know, kind of FOMO and everybody's getting into the game now um, and wanting to play. The problem is these Ponzi schemes, you know, um, you know, scammers are making big money off people who want in on the latest digital gold rush, but don't understand the t how the technology works. All they see is an ATM machine, Bitcoin. Hey, buy Bitcoin here. Well, you know, what you're really doing is you're buying OTC. This is, you know, over the counter uh, trading, you know, over the counter buying Bitcoin. So you're not even in an exchange. You're not doing anything. You're just buying it and then you're holding it. It's easy for the little guy and people who don't really understand. But again, this opens up uh, doors for Ponzi schemes because people will say, hey, you know, offer you the world, uh, you know, doused in gold and, you know, they, they, don't, they give you nothing. So um, one coin, they're saying one coin, well, obviously back then uh, it's a Ponzi scheme uh, that uh, basically pitched itself as the next Bitcoin. And by the time of the Mumbai bus, they got busted where they were trying to do a set or like a pitch, a sales pitch. And they were busted. I mean, right in the middle of the sales pitch, raided it, took 18 uh, one coin representatives, seized over two million dollars in investor funds. And uh, by the time the Mumbai bust happened, it had only moved at least three hundred and fifty million dollars from a Ponzi scheme allegedly scanned through payment processor in Germany. So, um, Ponzi schemes, you know what I mean? ICOs are really the biggest ones when it comes to Ponzi schemes. Um, they, they even say ICOs are catnip for scammers. And of course they are, you know, they're not regulated by financial authority. 
anybody can promise you the sky, not even show you a working product or anything, you know, um, prototype, nothing. And they'll promise you the world. So it's all on, on basically trust at that point of what they're saying and the technology and so on and so forth. So ICOs are a big thing when it comes to Ponzi schemes. I just wanted to touch on that with people who are coming in the market, um, you know, Offline Ponzi schemes are obviously a big thing. Everybody knows about them. You know, cloud mining, blah, blah, blah. That's all kind of schemes and Ponzi schemes to get you to, to give them money. And then they're promising you a, a great return back on your money in crypto, right? Ponzi scheme, right? Um, uh, you know, also the pyramid effect too, you know. But uh, with that being said, moving just a little bit forward here, I wanted to get into Ethereum, okay? So Ponzi games are breaking out on the Ethereum blockchain. Why is it breaking out on the Ethereum blockchain? ERC-20, easiest um, uh, algorithm to use, especially with dApps. Because, uh, you know, with, due to smart contracting. So they're saying these two games, FOMO 3D and uh, Proof of Weak Hands 3D, POW, POW H 3D. Um, they're apparently the, the two biggest dApps right now on, on you know, the Ethereum uh, blockchain. And these guys are saying that a uh, figure that puts them on par with top decentralized exchanges that exceeds the highest highs of CryptoKitties, which is CryptoKitties was the biggest dap ever um, this year. And uh, it, it broke that, huge, hugely broke that. And then, you know, they're now on par with exchanges, decentralized exchanges on a 24 hour volume trading. 20,000 Ether, 9 million in 24 hours. So let's get into these games, you know, what exactly are, let me put touch on this real quick. Um, JP Koenig, uh, let's see, JP Koenig, do, 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 I was really like, I wanted to show you guys actually who he was, JP Koenig, because it kind of slipped my mind at the moment, but look him up, he knows, uh, he knows the stuff, um, uh, it is human nature, he basically says it is human nature to seek out gambling opportunities like Ponzi's, till now the only option has been shoddily run offline Ponzi's, if Ethereum's relatively clean Ponzi's displace the bad ones, the world, is, the world is a bit better off. So I guess you're the, the worst, the evil, you know, the worst of two evils or the better of the two evils is he's saying that these Ethereum Ponzi's are better than at least the offline Ponzi's and people can actually make money on it. So it, it is, but, you know, it, let's be honest, they're pyramid schemes. So even every user is getting paid for the users that join later. So there's the pyramid scheme with this Ponzi here. But it's a dap and everybody and people are using them. So what is this POH POWH 3D? These are actually um dapps they put out to uh kind of uh, chuckle at ICOs, to kind of, you know, make fun of ICOs on how uh Ponzi schemes are being run through 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 ICOs. Um and so they they built this um let's see. So Using a token called P3D and a custom decentralized exchange for users to buy it and sell it, the creators added some elaborate features to make a relatively simple and familiar idea more fun on a blockchain. More fun. Every time someone transacts, it levies a 10% fee. That fee is then distributed to everyone still holding the token. Okay? So Ponzi scheme. Someone comes in, everybody gets a little bit of what of that fee right because of that guy came in so people holding p3d get paid as people come in and they get paid as people go out as well it also rewards users for creating affiliate links that draw people in people you know rewards for them sticking around over time and then uh then they call these staking and mining functions so it's it's a scheme it's a ponzi pyramid scheme and but yet everybody's using them because again they don't understand the technology that's under it they don't want to really get into it so they'd rather either buy it at the atm machine otc or might as well do it this way you know and and you can actually play on it um so that's that's the ponzi scheme of it uh yes our staking and mining systems are comedic jabs at cryptocurrency as a whole they're also immensely more fun and reward in eth instead of something that may have value later um so its creators argue that they can't call it a scheme if it's upfront about every, how everything works. It's true. I mean, they didn't tell you that they're doing something that they're not. They're telling you exactly what it's doing and how it's working, and it absolutely is a Ponzi a pyramid scheme. But we'll pay an ETH, and so everybody's like, cool. You know, everybody understands what a pyramid scheme is. So, 
Why not make it in there? And you don't even have to go and sell it to anybody in a pyramid scheme. They come to you, you know, through the exchanges. So, uh, you know, not a bad little, you know, I would say Ponzi pyramid scheme. So FOMO 3D, which launched on April, July 8th, is, is another Team Just game that recalls the button. An experiment that ran on Reddit in 2015, which itself evoked penny auctions without any money on the line. So in the Reddit game, a simple button was accompanied by a 60 second timer. When a user clicked the button, the timer would reset. So, but if no one re clicked the button in that 60 second time, timer would run out and the game would end. It took two months and over 1 million clicks before someone let the timer run out. Oh man, so FOMO 3D said, hey, let's use that. Um, in a similar way, except for pushing the meta metaphorical button, costs a little bit of money now. So there are now over 21,000 Ether, nearly $10 million on the line at that time of writing. Users of the game buy a key, and each purchase sets the countdown, currently at around 24 hours, back to a certain amount. So it keeps everybody keeps throwing in, throwing in, throw it in, throw it in, and then when nobody buys in anymore in a 24 hour period, it drops back down to this level and all that money then gets distributed out to everybody. Um, is that a Ponzi? I mean, again, they're telling you what it is. They're telling you how it works. So if you're getting into it, um, you know, then they're not telling you anything that's not right. It, they're telling you it's pretty much um, making fun of cryptocurrency and how things work and and, you know, this is the way people get paid and so on and so forth. Well, they're making it a reality here and it's getting paid. And nobody's nobody's bitching. More people are getting into it. So uh, mainstream, this may be helping out people getting into a mainstream, but it really has some bad tendencies. You, you learn some really bad tendencies from, you know, these type of, of, of playing, I guess, the market or playing in cryptocurrency, dabbing in cryptocurrency coins. So. Um, just want to touch on those, you know, real quick, you know, as far as Ponzi schemes, um, you know, again, BitConnect was a huge, huge Ponzi scheme. Everybody jumped in it and BitConnect freaking plummeted, took everybody's money and everybody's all pissed off and everybody goes, you know, you live and learn, you know, that's just the way it works. So maybe this is a live and learn moment for a lot of people coming in the market. But again, they're telling you what it is. They're telling you that it's a, a, a goof on the actual uh, cryptocurrency markets and you know, it, it seems to be attracting more people in the market. So last but not least, Crypto Fear and Greed Index, 49 today. Awesome to see. 44 yesterday. We are now in the neutral zone. 50, 49, 50, neutral zone. Uh, great to see. Uh, we're at a nice, you know, angle as far as sentiment, um, history, and uh, it's, it's good to see. So let's hope that we stay on this. And let's hope that Fam Unger here is actually correct in his bull scenario. And we're not in a little tricky, tricky bear scenario here where we go up for one or two weeks and into the death cross here. So uh, also remember, I'm still doing the 100 subscriber giveaway for a cold storage coin Bitcoin or a cold storage coin Ethereum. At 100 subscribers, it is a random subscriber giveaway. And then at 150, I'm going to be picking a subscriber myself who... Uh, you know, who's been sticking around has been kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, knowledgeable and uh, kind of helps out on the, uh, you know, description. So leave your Ethereum address and Bitcoin address alone uh, below so I can send you $20 as well for the 100 subscriber giveaway. And uh, we will go from there. So my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below, leave your Ethereum Bitcoin address. You guys have a great day. Keep up the grind.